Central and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Hendersonville, Tennessee, are pastor of Lenexa Christian Center in Lenexa, Kansas, Pastor Mike Berkey, Christian artist and songwriter Betty G. Robinson, singer-songwriter Walt Mills, anointed trio the Daryl Williams Trio, songwriter, pastor, and singer Del Way, pastor of Trinity Music City Church in Hendersonville, Tennessee, Pastor Steve Gallagher. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. And welcome to Praise the Lord. It's going to be a great night of music, and I hope some of your very, very favorite singers are in the building. They're all standing behind me. We have Mike Perky, Walt Mills, and Steve Gallagher is not going to sing, I hope. He's going to bring a, bring a word. Betty Jean Robinson, Karen Williams, Daryl Williams, and, uh, and uh, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon Knight. The, the Daryl Williams trio, and then, of course, Delway on the end. Mary Brown, it's going to be a great time It's going to be a great music. night. If Hang you around. like music, you're at the right place. So don't even think about going anywhere. Don't change the channel. I want to, I want to read to you from Psalm 103. I love it. You going to hold something for you? I think I can. Okay. I really don't need to read it because I sort of know it. Okay. One of my favorite psalms, and it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that is within me. And then it says, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 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 We're looking for benefits. Let's don't forget the benefits from the Lord. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Mm -hmm. And then who crowneth thee with loving kindness, tender mercies. Right. Who satisfies our mouths with mm. good things right. so that our youth is even renewed. I'll take it as the eagles. <laughs> and then, because we have just a short time, I'm going to go to the very last verse. And it says, bless the Lord, all his works, all of his works. Mm. That's everything that we are, that we see, that we hear that we walk in, bless the Lord all his works, and in all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, mm. oh, oh my, my soul. So, come here, Steve. I want you to pray. Steve's going to share a word in just a moment. Uh, is it preach or what? I mean, what are we going to do? I'm going to share a word. <laughs> I'm going pre- to preach, teach, prophesy, exhort. Is it from the word? Hum. Oh, from the yeah. word. From the word. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Why don't you pray right now, and maybe Amen. we can get uh, the anointing flowing in this room yes. and in the room where you are. It's exciting to be here. Why don't you stand with us right now in this auditorium and at home? Just get ready, because I believe that God is going to do something incredible in this broadcast tonight. No matter if you watch it in the morning or way at midnight, yeah. no matter if you're across the world or right here in Nashville, Tennessee, God has a perfect plan and a design for your life tonight. And we didn't come. My, my mother used to say something, and uh, I still say it myself. She said, now, Steve, when I talk to you, I'm not talking to hear my head rattle. <laughs> and I want you to know that we moved into a season where God is not talking just to amuse himself. He has something to say to America and something to say to the world. And that's why we're here tonight. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. I Father, you. I... Th- <laughs> Dean said, I hear your head rattle. <laughs> I love it. Do you know that Christians have more fun on accident than sinners do on purpose? Did you know that? We're going to have a great time tonight. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to prophesy. We're going to minister. And I couldn't be with a better bunch of people. I love every person on this stage. And you know it's the truth. Especially these two right here. Father, thank you for the anointing. That you give us, and your word says, the anointing destroys the yoke of bondage and sets every captive free. 
And I pray that right now in this mass television audience across the world, I pray that every person will hear as it was in the day of Pentecost. They will hear the message in their own language and that they will respond to the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and well, that He still saves, He still delivers, He heals, and He's coming back again. We declare it now, and we declare that this is the day that you've designed, not only as a day of new beginnings, but the beginning of something new in the kingdom of God. And we declare it now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And someone said, Amen. Amen. Well, are you ready? Are you ready? Are Walt you Mills ready? is coming to sing, I got a feeling. Come on, Walt. Y'all help me right now. to lead all his people out but Pharaoh's heart was hard and he thought he'd give them the route so he chased them all down to the Red Sea shore he thought he wouldn't have to worry about Moses anymore Moses stretches right out over the sea and the Lord answered Moses with a little gentle breeze I can see Moses now with a smile on his face telling all the people with his gentle grace I've got a feeling Everything's gonna be alright Went out to fight the giant And everyone laughed It's such a funny little sight Little shepherd boy Armed only with a sling Beside mighty Goliath Seemed such a puny little thing David said you come to me With spear and a sword But I come to you In the name of the Lord He put in a stone And he gave it a fling When it left his hand David he began to sing I've got a feeling greatest story of them all. Jesus was a dying and hell had a ball. All the demons were rejoicing. They thought they had won the war. But soon they would not be laughing anymore on that first Easter morning when the sun woke up the earth. The caverns of the deep opened up as to give birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings. Now the host of children rise and sing.
saints of Jesus will meet him in the sky. Written calls for the chosen few, I'm going up, how about you? Where you going to be when the saints go marching in? Clothed in a long white robe All of my pain and sorrow Will vanish when the trumpet blows And when he calls for the saved by grace Then I see him face to face What a happy day When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in Go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in
Somebody give Mike Turkey a great big hand and all of our singers so far. Oh my goodness, I think I'm a, I think I'm a uh, stage man for Del Way. I don't know what it is. Thanks to Calvary, I don't go those places I used to go anymore. Amen. What's been going on, Dale? I, I believe God has given you a word and a song, and, and God's been speaking to you in your life. Yeah, you know, the Lord spoke to me uh, the other day when I was coming. I knew I was coming here, and I asked God what he would have me to sing. And, you know, a lot of times you see us on TV, and we're all smiles, and everything's great. Sure. Man, if you just had the faith we have, people, you'd have it all made. Yeah. You know, that's the that's thing. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like, yeah. But uh, the fact is, is people go through stuff. And I was thinking about the scripture, you know, you, if you have faith, you shall speak unto this mountain. You know, and this mountain shall be removed. It doesn't say the mountain disappears. It just says the mountain moves. And I don't know about you, but sometimes my mountain moves slow. <laughs> I mean, can I get a witness? Yeah, it's true. Sometimes it's cast into the sea a little at a time. And I, I go through the valleys. And I, I know you're, you're watching right now. And, and you're not smiling right now. A lot of people do. You know, Mary's scripture when she said, I will bless the Lord at all times. I, I Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not all his, all his benefits. You know, I'm just telling you right now, you don't feel like blessing the Lord with all that's in you right now you're going through hell i got three phone calls today just from people in my church going through it and don't say i don't have faith or i'll come look you up <laughs> i got faith but people go through stuff and when they go through stuff we have to stand on the word we have to stand with jesus through it all you know dale some people have heard the word today or in the last week and i heard it not long ago and i don't this is not about my testimony but some of these people have heard cancer yeah, I heard it today. I had you heard that today? One called and said he was diagnosed. He was His equilibrium was off. Did a CAT scan, found out he's got cancer of the brain. One doctor says it's he's done. Sending him to a specialist. But, you know, I mean, we're believing God to heal him. Uh, you know, just because the doctor says it's over doesn't mean it's over. But people go through stuff. Listen, when you, when you go through that, I don't care how holy you are. Mm -hmm. You're not going to tell me that you're just going to go, bless God, this stuff ain't got in me. I, this stuff ain't going to have nothing to do with me. Son, I've been there. Don't, don't even start preaching to me about that. I've been through it. When people are dealing with stuff and the doctor gives you a death sentence. And you're trying to believe God. And you're watching TV, Christian TV. And you're trying to, to get faith in it. You are. But, you know, sometimes we have to just stand through it all. And we, sometimes in tears. Sometimes in our mountain moves slow. And, you know, I, I say this. And I'm saying this to you because I want you to know I know where you're at. And we know what you're going through tonight. You need to call, by the way. There's people. We want to talk to you. Call the, call us because we've got people standing by that's right now waiting to talk to you about your problem and what you're going through and to pray the prayer of faith with you. But, you know, I, I hate to say this. I'm not trying to be a downer. And good news is, is this is the last part I'll be able to talk. <laughs> but some of the greatest lessons I've learned of who God is and who I am have been in the valley. When I, I saw no hope. When I saw no light it was in the darkness it was in the deepest part and it wasn't until later when i got on the mountain that i could look back down in the valley and see the hand of god you know dale no, we, we and we've shared this before and we won't have time to go into detail but this man has stood in the in the welfare lines and trying to start a church and had a wife dying of cancer and uh uh, going on the free to the free medical clinics. I mean, y'all don't see all that, and you don't you don't know all that. But that, I'm talking about this man right here. And so, if if that's where you are tonight, and you're 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 just at the end, it seems like that there's no no place else to go. What what do you say to them? Yeah. You have to just keep trusting the Lord. The fact is, is this is it's in the valley of tests that we find out if we really trust God. I I, I, I hate to use cliches because I'm so tired of hearing preachers use cliches. Rhymes don't necessarily mean anointing. Anyway, that's my pet peeve. But uh, the fact is, is the faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. It's only through the testing of our faith that we find that we can trust our faith. And so, yeah, we go through it. I don't want to go through it. And, and you don't want to. You're sitting out there tonight. You're watching us. And you're not wanting to go through what you're going through. But all I, all I can say to you is, is you've got to keep trusting, the, trusting God. You have to trust Him in faith. Trust, fake it till you make it if you can't do anything else. You know, stand in faith and uh, cry in faith. But stand. 
You know, you don't have to act like it's perfect and everything's perfect. It's not. Listen, when you got a wife dying of cancer, it's hard to act like everything's perfect. Even though you believe in the healer, but it's tough when you're dealing with stuff like that. You just got to keep trusting the Lord. I wrote this song out of a tragedy. I pray to be a blessing to you. I will keep trusting you. I will keep trusting you. And whatever, whatever comes my way. In the good times or the bad, through the happy or the sad, I will keep trusting you. Listen to me. Oh, every day. Here's the hard part. I will lean not to my own understanding. But in all my ways, I will acknowledge you. And I will trust you in every situation. And until you make a path to lead me through. I will keep trusting you. I will keep trusting you. In whatever, whatever comes my way. Oh, in the good times or the bad, through the happy or the sad, I will keep trusting you. Oh, every day, here's what you have to do now. So let the light of your world always guide me. And keep me safe in any storm I may go through. And help me learn to just wait. And help me learn. To just wait and not always rush you. Then when patience, perfect work is done, this is what I will do. I will keep trusting you. I will keep trusting you. In whatever. Oh, whatever comes my way Oh, in the good times and the bad Through the happy or the sad I will keep trusting Oh, every day you Gotta keep trusting
you can dry every tear that falls from the eyes tonight. You can heal every pain, dear Jesus. You can bind up every wound, Lord. You can lift every heart tonight, Lord Jesus. Like Jacob of old, I will not let you go until you bless me. Lord, we need you tonight. America needs you, Lord. The church needs you, Lord. We need to know the anointing, Lord. We need to feel the anointing, Lord. Oh, we need to know you. We need to know you, Jesus. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me see your blessed face. Let me touch your nails, God. Let me see.
I'd rather have you, Jesus, than any more than anything this world affords today. This world affords me. This world affords today. Somebody needs to praise him now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Oh, that's good, Mary. And it's a place, a place where sin can. Just move toward the heart of God. You know where you're That's supposed it. to be. That's it. You don't. You don't need to be lying to yourself anymore about your addictions, about your life, about your failures. Man, there's a bunch of trouble on this stage, y'all. There's a bunch of stuff that we'll, we're never going to tell you. But you know what? We just keep moving. We just keep moving toward the heart of God. And if you'll move right now with Mary and me and Mike Perky and and Daryl Williams and 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 Walt Mills, if you'll move with if you'll move with us right now, if you'll just come with us. Come on, let's move right in. Hold us who wait before thee near to the heart. You know, Walt, I believe some want to move to that place and there's nothing more confusing to me than to try to intellectualize the Word of God. It really confuses me, and I think that a lot of people are hung up on that. Yes. But you know, it's, the Bible says it's by grace. I think you know that Scripture and a lot more, but I'd like you to share a Scripture, and then I'd like for you to call those people that are watching. I'd like you to call them to a, to a place of moving into the heart of God. You know, Dean, the Word of God said, by grace through faith are you saved, that not of yourself, lest any man should boast. God fixed it where well, you can't get there any other way than through Him. Amen. And tonight I was thinking about my little Baptist grandmother. She was four foot eleven. Kind of like Betty Jean sitting there by you. Covered all the ground she stood on. But I remember when I was a boy about five years of age. And I remember my grandmother telling me son 
All you have to do to be saved is ask God to forgive you, and He will. And the night that my wife and I knelt at an altar, I do not know what that man preached about. I was in such turmoil inside of myself that all I was waiting on was the altar call. That man could have said Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and I would have gone. But I went to that altar, kneeling by my wife, with that nugget of truth that my grandmother Mills put in my heart. Son, all you have to do to be saved is ask God to forgive you, and He will. And she told me the truth. Because when I got up, I was saved and been saved ever since. And all you need to do is just take that same little advice. Ask Jesus to forgive you of all your sins, and He will do that. He will do that. Pray with me right now and mean it from your heart. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the only way I know how. I don't really know what to say, but this man told me that if I would ask you to forgive me, that you'd do that. And I believe that. And I ask you to save me now. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart because I receive you as my personal Savior. And I confess you as my Lord. And neighbor, there's a number there on the screen. There's a number there on the screen that you can call. And there's someone to help you even further. So make the call right now. Make the call right now. And go and tell somebody. You know, confess him before, confess Jesus before men. And the nearest person you can right now, just go to that phone. It's a toll-free number. Do it right now. I can hear. sing a great song. Yes, there is a fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel
listen. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins
say this before we do this little song because when Dale began to speak a while ago he talked about standing on the word of God people we are dealing with in our churches and people we know that are dealing with cancer and situations the lady that wrote this song tonight is battling cancer not expected to live 
And Sister Magruder is who I'm talking about tonight. She's in some hard stages of cancer. On the way down today on the airplane, I sat by a man, and he found out I was a minister, and he said, it's so unique that I would sit here by you. He said, my 18-year-old boy is in rehab and is battling drugs and addictions and all. There's people hurting everywhere. And I don't know how many times we've uh, made this statement, well, I'm just standing on the Word. There's nothing greater you can do than to stand on the Word. And the people tonight listening to us, going through pains, going through heartbreaks, going through a lot of stuff, understand the enemy's doing everything he can to pull you away from the Word, to pull you out of believing that the Word will make the difference. But let this little song touch you, because in it, we're going to keep standing on the Word of God. Hallelujah. In spite of everything 
everybody to do what that song says and to stand on his word. You know, we had a, you know, this is not a, this is not a sad time. Mike was talking about somebody, the lady who wrote this song. We had a friend just died with cancer. She's with Jesus now. We asked her how that we should pray for her in the end. She said, I'm ready to go home. You know, sometimes we, we, we pray and we, we just try to bring them back. And she said, I'm just ready to go home. She wasn't but 70, what, 3, 73, 74 years old. Very vibrant woman. But you know what? I believe that we can stand on His Word, that we have a time to be here. And yes. we all have a time appointed. Yes. The Bible says that it is. But one of these days, we're going to step aside. One of these days, we're going to step over. We're going to step over on the other side. Yes. What about it, Mike? Where are we going to go? Somebody needs to shout right here, I think. Woo! My home will be eternal. Beulah land, sweet, sweet Beulah land. Delway, I think, you're, I think you're up. I think you have a song. I got a song. Come on. I'm going to sing it. Let it happen. Sing it. I'm Let sing it happen. It. Hey! Woo! Dean Brown and I started writing this song, and we got a little help from a friend, James. So it turned out pretty decent. Woo! Well, I work real hard for the devil. I gave him many years of my life. But I didn't like the wages he was paying of heartache, trouble, and strife. And then I got a call from Jesus. He offered me a better plan. 
So I signed on with the big, big boss. Now I'm a card carrying company man. Yeah, I'm a card carrying Christian, but I'm a company man. I work my way up, way up from the bottom. You ought to see where I began. I was lower than the belly of a well that swallowed Jonah. A rattlesnake was my best friend. carrying Christian lady. Sanctifying power. Do you know anything about the sanctifying power? We're going to have Steve Gallagher preach in just a minute. 
Nate. That's no, good. Nate, what? You never have to worry about what she's singing about. <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear, isn't it? <laughs> Sanctifying power and blood. I wonder, can we do, uh, before Steve uh, comes to bring the word in just a moment, can we do, uh, oh, I want to see him? Who knows that? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody. Uh, people at home know that, do you? Uh, I think anybody that's ever been to church for a while knows the chorus of that. Don't you right, think? So it's your time to sing, too. Oh, oh yeah. I want to sing. together again huh you know mary but as we get ready to go on i'd like for you to do just a little bit of what a healing jesus it's one of my favorite songs of course mary and dean wrote that song mary wrote it mary wrote the song but uh it's a powerful song is it not probably one of the greatest healing songs that has ever been written and that's the truth I tell people quite often when I come on TVN, uh, I don't come on as a man pleaser. I don't have to. You don't have to. None of us have to. So I, I didn't come to blow smoke. I came to help start a fire. That's, that's kind of where we're at. And we're in a season right now where cliches and euphemisms and colloquialism is not going to get it anymore. The little three-point and the poetry and the cute little things that we say, you know, there's people out there dying. It's like Mike was saying and uh, hurting people that are broken, that have been beaten up and bruised, not only by the world, as we always like to blame everything on the world. You know, it's a, I grew up with the folks and I, and I, I, I love them dearly, but we, we didn't even put the D on the end of worldly. It, we just left, it was worldly. That's, those are a bunch of worldly people out there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You may say it that way. Worldly people. That's seven. Can't go out there. But you know what I found? I found growing up in church, I'm a fourth generation Pentecostal. I found at times where the church should be the safe zone. The house of God should be the safest place. It should be an oasis, but it becomes a war zone. And lots of people get damaged in church. They come looking for help and they limp out. Hello. And tonight I want you to know that no matter if you've gone to the ends of the earth and you've committed every sin possible and you've blasphemed the name of God 
and you've destroyed the work that God has tried to build and you've done some crazy stupid stuff or if you've been in the church for a while I want you to know that the holy presence of God is in this season see this is a new season say with me this is a new season this is a time of healing this is a time that God has ordained to bring you back to your best. Say it with me. I'm coming back to my best. I'm not my best right now. I've been better. But I'm coming back to my best. <laughs> I'm coming back to my best. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you tonight for this opportunity. I want you to pray with me right now. Will you pray with me at home? Close your eyes. Touch someone that's close to you. Or touch the television and say, oh, I'm coming back to my best. I've been better. I know I've been better. Lord, I want to thank you for bringing me tonight with these dear men of God and women of God. I want to thank you because I feel the anointing of God. I feel the touch of God. We need more than a sermon and more than a song. We need the substance more than we need the style. And there are greater than me on this stage and watching that could deliver this word. But tonight, right now, we're coming together. And I thank you for great pastors like Pastor Mike Perky and Pastor Del Way. That every Sunday deliver the word to their congregations. And I thank you for Betty Jean and Walt. And I thank you for Dean and Mary and for Daryl Williams and this incredible trio because they know what it means. They're ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's all about healing. It's all about breaking the yoke of bondage. Destroying the yoke of bondage and setting captives free. It's more than just about building a church or erecting a steeple. It's more than choir. It's more than songbook. It's more than tithe on Sunday morning. It's more than crystal cathedral or stone. Yes. Yes. But there is a God who cares about the concerns of His people and the concerns of those who are of lowly estate and lowly esteem. The Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted and set the captive free. He has anointed me to open the doors of the prisons. He has anointed me to declare that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. He has anointed me to declare that the waste places shall be well watered and that you will put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness saith the Lord for I will bring you forth in your moment of weakness and in your moment of loneliness in your moment of brokenness saith the Lord I will lift you up and I will give you your place from obscurity into prominence saith God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The young men will see visions, and the old men shall dream dreams. I will pour out my spirit upon your handmaidens, and upon my servants, saith the Lord. I will replenish the wheat, the wine, and the oil. For all the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Somebody say, I'm coming back to my best. Coming back to my best. Better than ever. Better than ever. I'm coming back. What a healing Jesus. What? Say with me right now. Give me, I'm going to give you a word in just a moment of deliverance. And I want tonight to be a massive, massive time of restoration and healing right now. Let it happen. Come back to the kingdom. 
Come back to the Father's house. Come back to the Father's house. For such a time as this, arise on healing wings, son of righteousness. Sing a verse. Sing, sing that verse. We're walking by the, the Spirit of the Lord. Now is upon me. I want you to begin to call the number right now. Me. For your sons and for your daughters, say, call to the numbers. Say, the broken hearts. They're broken. Open They've been beaten doors. up. Set their legs the have been cut out from underneath them. They're a victim of circumstance. Or they are responsible for their own pain. But bring them back tonight with a message of restoration. lips with praise right now. It may be called the word of God says you're a tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Sing what a healing. What a healing, Jesus. What a healing Jesus. Sing it all. in the history of the world where the church has to take its rightful place and the kingdom of God has to rise up and declare its voice in the book of Luke chapter 15 listen if anyone here has any kind of a concept or thought that you might want to interject you feel free to do so but in Luke chapter 15, there's three stories told, the sheep, the silver, and the sun. Say with me, the sheep, the silver, and the sun. Three stories. And the Bible tells us that as Jesus was teaching one day, it's interesting because he was teaching to the publicans and the Sadducees, the sinners, or the, the publicans and the sinners, not the republicans, the publicans and the sinners. I'm not going to get political on you tonight. I know you expect it. I'll leave that for someone else. But as he was teaching, it's interesting because he began to hear in his circumferential hearing and his peripheral vision, he saw the wagging of the tongues and the moving of the mouths. And the Bible said that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were murmuring against him because he was getting too close to the sinners. Hello. I want to tell you something right now. You know what's happened at the church? We've got too close to the saints. Hello. And we've got too far from the sinners. I said we've become too enamored with the saints and we've become less compassionate with those who need the help the most now see I, I feel like I can address the issue even though I may be the least in some I, I have been in the Pentecostal they used to say the way I've been in the way for a long time is it time for me to get out Mike or not get out of the way <laughs> I've been in the way for a long time, and I've seen lots of things happen. And I love God's people more than anything in the world. And I love 
the saints of God. I love the old saints of God. My dad is a, is a wonderful man of God, 73 years old, 53 years in the ministry, a preaching machine. I love him dearly. I love the saints of God. My grandmother passed away when she was 97 years old. And she was still praising and praying and speaking in tongues and declaring. I believe in the saints, but let me tell you something. In our philosophy, especially in the charismatic movement, if we're not careful, we'll pay so much attention to those that can further our agenda. Oh my, I, I didn't want to get in trouble tonight. I'm a good guy. Look, look at someone and say, Steve's a good guy. Not all the time, but most of the time. He's a good guy. I feel like that we've gloried too much in our titles. We've gloried too much in our accolades. We become too enamored with what we're called and the name that's over our door and the card that we carry. No offense, Dale. I'm a card-carrying Christian. That's all that matters. You know what? It's dangerous nowadays to, to, to mess up somebody's title. They'll end up correcting you. Don't know who the pastors, the bishops, or the archbishops are. I, just, I don't know anymore. You know what I'm saying? Your eminence. Someone asked me, Steve, what should I call you? I said, well, my mom named me Stephen. That's with a P-H. I got a little bit older and I shortened my name to Steve. And my dear mother cried. She said, son, I gave you a biblical name. And now you got rid of it. I love <laughs> Oh, my. Listen, I want to tell you, I love God's people. I love the saints of God. But there's nothing more important in the kingdom than reaching the lost. That's why this network exists. That's why Trinity Broadcasting Network is still in existence. Paul and Jan have a heart for the lost. We may not always do it right, but guess what? We do some things right. David had a heart after God. He understood that even when we fall down, that we can get back up. He understood that even when we fail, there's someone that is waiting right at the right hand of God making intercession for every person that has ever fallen. He's still right there, the mediator, the savior, the deliverer, the one who brings us back. Say, I'm coming back to my best. Coming back to my best. I may not be my best now, but I'm coming back to my best. I understand what it means to fall down. Never understood it before. You've heard my story. I'll tell you, you know what? I'm not ashamed to tell because it's what the Holy Spirit told me to. Because I, I, was, I, I was arrogant in my approach. I didn't think I was, but I was. Came right out of a pastor's home into a Bible college. Had great favor. Went on ministries every weekend. In the Bible college, I got to sing and I got to preach. Yes, I, I got to sing, believe it or not. I got to, I got to sing and I got to... <laughs> You got to share a little bit of my singing tonight. Got to sing, got to preach, got out there, came out of that into a powerful a, a, a church that had been the Assembly of God, by the way. So I got as, about as close as I could get. Went in, pastored 12 buses, had hundreds of kids, incredible favor. Went and pastored a church. Church exploded. I don't mean literally. I think some people wish it had. But, <laughs> but we grew and by leaps and bounds. And just, just, oh, it was so awesome. And my sister said to me one day, she said, Steve, she's a pastor's wife and my brother's a pastor. said, why don't you ever have any trouble? And I said, oh, I have trouble. And they said, oh, you don't have any trouble. I said, I have trouble. Now you just don't have any trouble. Well, I went on, left, moved on. And guess what? Ran into trouble. 
It does come. Understand, listen, you're not by yourself tonight if for some reason you have failed in your responsibility. Whether you are a victim of circumstance or it's someone else's fault, let me tell you that God's getting ready. He has, He is working a strategy in this season to bring you back to your best. There was a man not too long ago that was watching right here from this stage. He was in his motel room and you hear the stories all the time but I met the man this is not some evangelistical evangel evangelistical ev evangelistical there we go evangelistical story but he was sitting in his motel room when someone from this stage said you're in a motel room and you're about to kill yourself Dale you're about to die You've got pills and you've got whatever it was to drink. And he was about to kill himself and he heard that one lone voice in the middle of the night. You wonder, why does Christian television exist? Why would we take our time out to sing two or three songs and travel many miles? Some of these tonight, we're in a winter weather advisory. It's cold outside. It's nasty outside. And you came and many of you sitting in the auditorium and you decided to watch television tonight when you could be watching the American Idol. I, hey, I got you. Hey, listen to me. It's because God has a plan for your life. And the word of God to you tonight is you are going to live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. Say that with me. I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That man heard the word, received the word, fell on his face, cried out to God, save me. Hey, listen, it could happen to anybody. Look at these young Hollywood stars that have everything and end up dead in their hotel rooms and rehab. No hope in sight they see. But see, I believe that we're in a season where Jesus is going to silence the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's going to silence those that would keep you out of the kingdom of God. He's going to shut them up and shut them out and reach out as far as he possibly can and reach down as low as he possibly can. And no matter where you are, he's going to bring you right through all of the religion into a legitimate relationship with him. I met the man. He said, I was on my face before God. And I said, Jesus, save me. He cried unto the Lord. The Bible said, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you can't even imagine. Again, the word says, call on him in your day of trouble and he will deliver you. Jesus said, if you call me and you lay your burden on me, my burden is lighter than anything you've ever been carrying, man. My yoke is easy. And he showed up here at a, a taping just like this and said, Man, I gave my heart to the Lord. I can't even believe it. I'm alive today because someone told me that I could live. You can come back to your best. And so Jesus taught the sheep escaped from the fold, went out into the night, went out into darkness, went out into rebellion, could not find his way. You know, people leave the church for lots of reasons. Let's face it. Some people leave the church mad and some people are wrong because they're rebellious. They leave the church because they're rebellious. No doubt about it. But there are other people who leave the church because they were hurt by someone else. And the pastor gets up and he tries to preach a message of reconciliation. And he tries to tell people to love one another. And he, every day he's sweating and he's praying, believing God for unity. And yet someone with that pharisaical spirit right. Yeah, right. in that church will end up 
bringing hurt and pain into someone's life. And so what they do, they run to the outside, hoping to find peace out there. You run out there, but there is no peace out there. And the time is up. Tonight is the night. Today is the day that you make your decision for Christ. There was a woman in the middle of the night who lost a piece of silver. You know, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me in this season about small things. To not discount the small things. To learn how to celebrate the small things. You know, when you have a lot of money and you have everything going your way, it's no big deal when you're standing at the line at the grocery store and you drop a penny or you drop a quarter, you leave it there. That ain't no big deal. But I'll tell you something. When you're broke, when you're broke, you'll go through every coat in your closet. Can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? Did I hear a witness out there? I can't see you, but I know you're there. When you are broke, you will go through every drawer counting your change. <laughs> Thank God for change machines that you can find at Kroger and Publix. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. I needed some money one week, me and my, my sons, it's been a little while ago, but we went around and we started collecting cash, all the change that I throw in drawers and I throw in the cigarette lighter in the car and I throw down on the side and we, I mean, we, we went on a search for money. I think it was my youngest son, he wanted something and I said, dude, man, I'm, you know, you know, got money. I ain't got no money. Well, I said, you know, let's find some money. I don't want to, you know. So we went, we get, we ended up with $60 of change. That feels good. Yeah. Went and dumped it out. I was kind of, I was kind of embarrassed. Luckily, I wear a ball cap and glasses most of my time when I'm out there and I walk into Kroger and walk into Publix and pour it out, you know, and chicka, 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 look around. Yeah, we're shaking that thing up. Hey, listen, it may not mean much to you when you've got a lot, but when, you, when you're down to your last dime, you'll search every pocket you possibly can. When you've lost something valuable in your life, when you've lost your dignity, when you've lost your pride, when you've lost your, your, your whole purpose, when you've lost direction, and you can no longer find the meaning and reason for living. You'll do whatever it takes. Lost things will keep you up late at night. And lost things will get you up early in the morning. The shepherd went out on a search. Out on the side of a hill. Down into the thorn. To find that one little lamb. He left the ninety and the nine. To bring the one back. The woman stayed up all night. She overturned the couch. And she overturned the bed. And she broke out every candle she had. And she grabbed the broom and began to sweep. Because this was a necklace left to her by her groom to be. And with one little coin missing. It devalued her relationship with the one she loved. You're broken. I, here's what I feel about the body of Christ in many ways. Many of us are reborn, but we're not rebuilt. Many of us are reborn, but we're not rebuilt. And tonight we're going to call you back. I don't care if you're totally away, if you've been out there and you've lost everything in life, or you've been in that mold where you have lost your spiritual consciousness. You've lost your direction. You've lost your purpose for living. Maybe you've been hurt or you're damaged. You've gone through trauma and tragedy and tribulation. The pain of death has pierced your home. A son or daughter in drug rehab. An alcoholic husband or wife. 
Everything seems to have been gone. The bottom has dropped out and you don't know what to do. I'm telling you tonight, get up in the midst of the night. Kick over everything you possibly can kick over. Desperate circumstances call for desperate measures. You can no longer sit idly by and say, well, maybe something will change. You've got to help it change. By making a decision, I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm ready to come back. I'm going to make my comeback. I'm coming back to my best. Say it with me. I'm coming back to my best. I'm not my best now, but I'm coming back to my best. I've been better, but I'm coming back to my best. Third, there was a son, the sheep, the silver, the son. There was a son that decided he was going to leave his father's house. So selfish. So selfish. He said, give me what is mine. Give me my inheritance now. Give me what is rightfully mine. See, you know what's interesting to me, Dean and Walt? It's interesting to me that, that even in moments of rebellion, we will sometimes justify our actions by what my right is. That's what's happening in America. I have the right to this. I have the right to that. I have the right to this. Well, it's like the one man said, yes, you have a right to, to, to yell. You have a right to swing your fist as long as it stops at the edge of my face. Right? You have a right to scream and yell as long as it doesn't impede my progress or production. But there is a generation and there have been individuals that rose up no matter how loving the father was, no matter how forgiving the father was, no matter how many times he gave you everything that you desired, you said, I'm going to do it my way. I have my rights. I'll make my own rules. I'll do my own thing. You can't tell me what to do. And now you found yourself in the middle of a pig pen. The Bible said he left the father's house and wandered out into a land with individuals that he didn't even know. It was an unknown world. And some of you, as grandma used to say, you've bit off more than you can chew. I've been there. You're not conditioned for the world. God didn't condition you. God didn't design you for the life that you've been living. He designed you to be better. He designed you to walk in the high place. He designed you to bring glory. Matter of fact, our catechism is that the chief end of all men is to glorify God. You've been designed for the Father's house and now you found yourself in the pig's pen because you have wasted everything you've owned on riotous living. It doesn't take long for friends to take advantage of you. But y'all want you to say with me now, I'm coming back to my best. I'm not my best right now. I'm coming back to my best. I've been better, but I'm coming back to my best. See, the father's there every day running out to the edge of the road waiting for you to come back. You think that he doesn't love you. You think God's mad at you. You think God is some thundering Thor rolling through the heavens in a golden chariot with an anvil trying to hit you over the head with it because you've done something wrong. I'm here to tell you that God is not that kind of a God. He's waiting for you to do something right so he can bless you. God's not devising a strategy or plan to kill you. He has already devised a strategy, worked it out, signed, sealed, and delivered it by the blood of His own Son, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah! 
I said we're coming after you tonight. There's a rescue team that God has designed on this day to come after you. We're not going to let you die in your sin. We're not going to allow the enemy to destroy your soul. We're not going to allow you to die in the pig pen. We're sending the clarion call. There is hope. There is life. There is peace. There is salvation. And there is deliverance in the Father's house. Coming back to my best. There's nothing worse when you realize that you're not your best. Nothing worse when you realize that you are a miserable failure. And I've been there. Never thought I would be there. Was there. Looked up. Saw dark. My golden sun had turned to midnight. Once a young man of decision... I became indecisive. Once a man of answers, I became a man of questions. Once a man who knew how to solve problems, I could not even solve my own. I cried into God. I said to myself, Surely it's got to be better than this. The Bible said, and the young man woke up early in the morning and said, man, it's better. There's got to be something better than this. And he just remembered for a moment, oh, I know a better place. It's not the hotel down the street. It's not the bar that I've been hanging out in. It's not the crowd that I've been keeping. It's not the dance that I've been dancing or the song that I've been singing that brings me peace. It's the Father's house. And he ran. And the Bible said as he ran to the Father's house, suddenly the Father ran toward him. He came to himself and he realized, I'm not the man. I'm not this man. I'm better than this. And I'm telling you tonight, you're better than this and I'm coming after you and I don't care what you've done I don't care how broke you are he's come to mend the broken hearted to set the captives free we're bringing you out and back to the father's house tonight the sheep, the silver the son The Bible said he put a robe on his back, took shoes off of his feet and put his own shoes, which was a sign of ownership, put the ring on his hand, a sign of kingship. He said, I'll be a servant. God said, I don't want you to be a servant. I want you to be a friend. I've had so many people come to me for restoration and they've all said the same thing, guys. They've all said, I'll be willing, I'll be willing to wash the floor. I'll be willing to clean the toilet. I'll be willing to do, I'll carry your water. I'll carry your Bible. And I've said to every one of them, no, 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 that's not restoration. Good. Good. You cleaning my toilet's not what God wants you to do. Washing the floor, carrying my water. God wants to bring you back to your best. Right now, will you call the number on your screen? As we get ready to close in just a few moments, call the number. I want you to talk to the prayer partner. I want you to say, tell Steve I'm coming back to my best. Tell Mike Perky I'm coming back to my best. Tell Delway. Tell Daryl. Tell Walt. Tell Dean. Tell tell, I'm coming back to my best. I'm coming back to my best. Right now, Father, I reach out to you in the name of Jesus. The Bible declares the arm of the Lord is not shortened, that He cannot reach. Father, I pray, break the spirit of religiosity. Break the spirit of hypocrisy. Break 
the spirit of hopelessness and helplessness. Open the eyes. Bring redemption. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, bring redemption. Bigger than ever. More beautiful than ever. And better than ever. Bring them back to your best. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Dean and Mary. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus bless ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, right, CBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P, 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world. For your love gift this month, Paul and Jan would like to send you Mike Perky's latest CD, I Can Do Anything Through Christ. To me, he's become everything. If you love gospel music, you'll love this special CD. Ten great songs of hope and inspiration. Thanks to Calvary, I don't come here anymore. That will touch your heart. Send your love gift to TVN, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. What if Bible prophecies are true? What if the end of the world is at hand? Only one book dares answer these questions. The Shadow of the Apocalypse, When All Hell Breaks Loose, by Paul Crouch. In it, Paul Crouch reveals shattering truths found hidden in Scripture and an urgent prophetic call to people everywhere. This book presents the Bible as a spiritual map for direction and a clear understanding of what life is all about. T.D. Jakes calls it timely and riveting. The Shadow of the Apocalypse, in bookstores now and at tbn.org. There is one that is very much alive that hears your cry and feels your pain and knows where you are. And I want to look into this camera and say to you, you are not alone. Jesus is with you tonight. You think because you can play this game or because you can dunk the ball, yeah. you know, that you're the most talented. You might be the most talented in your age group. You might be the right. best student right. out there in, in your school. But let me tell you, there's somebody always out there better than you. Right. You know, and then that, I said that also applies as a man. 
You right. know, you might think you have certain skills that you can do better than someone else, but I said your real standard of being a man really isn't your fellow guy that you can hang out with or your homeboy or your homie, right. but it's it's Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the real standard. Amen. This is the Trinity Broadcasting Network, celebrating 34 years of God's miracles. The production and airtime of the following program is made possible by you, the TBN Partners, and is only here because of your generous support. In the year 70 AD, Roman legions sacked and burned Jerusalem. Israel would remain a nation in exile for nearly 2,000 years. But in the aftermath of World War II, the people of the book returned home. Israel's rebirth and survival in the 20th century has often been called a miracle. Those who were there cite their own experiences as proof. I'm Michael Greenspan. I'm an investigative journalist. These are their stories. 